Welcome to this lecture on stacks and queues, another set of tools to put in our programming toolbox, not only for C and C++, but for other programming languages as well. Um, these two techniques are um, ones that are uh, ways of organizing collections of data, uh, depending on what we're going to do with them. We'll be talking about several of these. We've talked about hashes. We'll be talking about linked lists next week. And uh, these are some other organizational uh, techniques and tools that we can use to organize, store, and, and retrieve data. Uh, and the data can be anything from simple numbers to structures to eventually uh, objects uh, of class types as we move into C++. So we'll start with a stack. Um, you, you should already kind of be familiar with the concept of a stack uh, because we use the stack when we make function calls in C. Uh, and hopefully in your 1030 class you talked a little bit about that mechanism. Um, but the idea um, is also something that you, you see in real life out in, out in the world. Uh, for example, the, the plates at the buffet that you go to, when you go to one of the all-you-can-eat buffets, when they bring out clean plates, they put them on top, and it pushes the other ones down. So the idea is the newest stuff is on the top of the stack, and the older stuff is farther down the stack. So the newest, cleanest plates are on top, and the older ones that got washed an hour ago are on the bottom, for example, in the buffet example. So um, we use uh, a stack as a data storage technique. We sometimes refer to it as an abstract data type, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, you can't access any element like you can in an array. You have to take things off the top and put things on the top. So in order to get to elements that are farther down, you have to remove the elements from the top first. Um, the two main functions are push and pop. So push is what we're going to use to add something onto the top of the stack and push everything else down and then pop when we take something else, take something off and then everything else is going to pop up one position if you will. So you only have access to the last element inserted. So sometimes we call this a last in, first out. So the last thing in is the first thing out or a LIFO. And we'll use this kind of an acronym kind of thing for a bunch of the different data structures uh, that we'll be talking about over time. So there's three basic properties for the stack. Uh, it has a capacity, how much can it hold, okay? Um, the number of elements that are currently in it, the current size, and then, of course, the individual elements that we can, that we can access. So how many currently on it, what's the maximum it can hold, and what's in there. So there's a real simple example showing how a stack might work with these little colored boxes. Um, so if we start out with an empty stack, so there's nothing in it, so you see a clear area here. And then we push a 5 onto the stack. So there's a 5 there. And then we have sort of an external pointer that always keeps track of where's the, the top of the stack, or sometimes it's called the head pointer, the head of the stack. And this, we'll use this terminology again when we talk about other kinds of data structures. If we push a 6 on, then the 5 goes down. The head is now pointing at the top. And notice we don't have any way directly to reference this value until we get it back up to that head position. So everything, the only access we have is through this one position right here. If we push a 7 on, everything else goes down, and now the head's pointing at the 7. If we do a pop, the 7 comes off, and now we can do something with it, and now everything's moved up, so the 6 is back with the head pointer pointing to it. And then if we do a pop again, we get the 6 off, and now the 5 is at the top of the stack. And if we did one more pop, the 5 would come off, and then our head pointer would be pointing at null. There wouldn't be anything on the stack. Um, so this is the way function calls work. If we, if we call a function, we push on some parameters uh, to call that function. If that function calls another function, then all the stuff from its call gets pushed down and we call that next function. So as we return, we return the latest information, the next latest information, etc. So this is very important when we think about things like recursion that we talked about last time. You know, We saw that uh, those calls that stacked up, well this is what they're doing. The first call goes on the stack and the next call gets stacked on top of that so that when we're unwinding, if you will, we're popping off the latest call, and that's going back to the next call, and the next call, next call, until we get all the way to the end, and we're going back to main. So it's the same kind of functionality uh, when we look at the, the program stack, or the, the function calling stack, if you will. Okay. So typically, uh, if we're going to implement a stack in some language, we're going to have several functions. Uh, we're going to have something to just create the stack, that would be, we call that one time, which says what's the maximum number of elements we want to have, of course, we can make it dynamically allocated as well, but this one's not going to do that. Um, it creates the stack, initializes space using malloc, etc. Then we're going to have to have a push function to put something on the stack, which is going to change where the head pointer points. 
and also checks for emptiness. The pop function, which will take the pointer to the top of the stack as an argument and will give us a value back. Um, and then the top function, which takes the pointer to the top of the stack as an argument and returns whatever the topmost element is. Each function runs in order one time. Remember we said that's the best again because the amount of time it takes to do any of these to push or pop doesn't depend on how many elements are in the stack because we're only interested in that topmost element. And we always know where it is because there's always a pointer, head pointer pointing to it. So we don't have to worry about um, operations taking longer when there's more things in the stack. So that's why sometimes this is a, a good solution again. Um, we can we can implement it using uh, arrays like in C or C++. Pretty simple and efficient, but we end up having to de statically declare the array so the, ma the maximum size is fixed. Or we can use a linked list implementation. It's a little more complicated, but we can grow the stack as much as we want, um, only subject to oops, sorry about that subject to available memory. Let me get back to where we were here. So let's look at the uh, first implementation. Um, so here's what the header file would look like. Um, these are just declarations of our functions. So we're going to have a push function. And this stack is just going to store single characters, just for simplicity. But we can do other versions later that store other kinds of things, like even structures. Um, so when we push, we have to give it what we're pushing on, and it doesn't return anything. So we're going to push on a character. When we pop, we don't need any arguments, but we're going to get an ar something back, which is the character that was at the top of the stack. Uh, empty just tells me, uh, returns an integer, really a boolean, true or false, one or zero, to tell me whether the stack's currently empty, and then another one to tell me if the stack's full or not, so I can check uh, the capacity in both cases. And then here's implementations of those uh, functions. We've got a couple of pound defines here just to define some values, so max stack size is 10, that's what we're limiting it to. An empty stack is going to give me a negative one. Um, value of top starts out as empty stack. Um, we're going to create an array of character items of size max stack, which is 10. Here's what the push function does. It simply um, sets the item at the next location. So notice it takes top and increments it, pre-increments it. So it would be 0 because it was negative 1. So it pre-increments it, and then item sub 0 would be the first element the first time. And then if top is some other value, like in this case it would be it was zero the next time, so it increment to one. That is going to have the character in it. Pop is going to return the item. It's going to decrement. Uh, it's going to use the value of top and then decrement it afterwards because we've, we've moved down, if you will. Full just simply returns whether if top plus one is equal to the max size. Because remember, it starts at zero, so it's array based. So uh, nine, nine plus one would give me a ten. If those are equal, then it returns a true, and then. If top equals empty stack, empty returns a true value. And then a main that uses this, we declared a character. We get a character from the user in this case, in this loop. Um, if the stack's not full, we push it on. And so that loop's going to keep going until the user just types in a return by itself or a new line, character return, enter, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's one loop. And then this loop is just going to go through and pop them all off and print them. So once we've filled up the stack, in this case of size 10, then we'll go through and pop them off. Now this isn't representative of what you'd really do with a stack. It's just uh, uh, using uh, all the functions to make sure that, that they work, or we're using all of them except for empty in this case. And we could have checked that up here too. Okay, but it was one illustration of using the stack. Now the, the stack implementation that we did over here, I could use this for all different kinds of, of code. In other words, I've built a generic implementation of a character stack here. Um, I could write mains that use it in different ways to actually store more useful and do more useful uh, applications than this using that same stack. So that's why we separated the header file and the code file for the stack from the code file for main. The main didn't have a, a header file in this case um, because now I can reuse it. It's now a tool. It's now a toolkit that I've built. Granted, this one's a fairly simplistic one because it only stores a single character as each element on the stack, but you get the general idea. So I can build tools and I can write different mains to use the same tools. And that's what we're, we're getting to the point of trying to do as we, as we move forward in 1040, is build tools that we can use to solve different kinds of problems. Okay, a queue is another specialized data storage structure. It's kind of similar to a stack. Now you may be more familiar with queues than stacks. Uh, from, from real life, as we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, 
Again, we can't access all the elements like in an array. We can only access the ones at the beginning and the end in this case. So it has two main operations, NQ and DQ. NQ means to add something to the queue. DQ means to remove something from the queue. Or you could call it add and remove or whatever. Or push and pop even for that matter. It's just going to happen at different ends of the queue. Uh, so inserting in the queue is using the NQ function. Removal is a DQ. We insert items at the end or the rear of the queue and remove items from the front. So Hopefully that sounds familiar, but think about when you go to Walmart or go to the grocery store or go to any store and you're ready to check out, what do you do? You get at the end of the line and the person at that particular register services the person at the front of the line. When that person leaves, the next person becomes the person at the front of the line, etc. Um, so this is the first in, first out. So the first item in is the first item serviced and therefore the first out. So we'll call this a FIFO as opposed to the LIFO that we had, last in, first out that we had with the stack. Um, so it operates a lot like a stack. There's these individual elements, but in this case, we take from the front and add to the rear instead of both taking and uh, putting onto the front as we did with the stack. So property-wise, it has a capacity. What's the maximum number of people we can have in a queue, uh, a particular queue? The size for how many things are currently in the queue. Of course, we've got the individual elements. Then we need to know, in this case, two pointers. We need to know where the front of the queue is, the first value, and the last value. Now, clearly, if we implement this with an array, um, that would be pretty easy because uh, we just know the first index is always zero, and the last index is changing, so we have to keep track of where that is as we add things to the queue. And just like uh, with the stack, we can implement this with an array or linked list. Uh, we saw the array implementation for uh, the stack, and, and you will learn more about linked lists if you haven't already seen some already, and then you could implement it as a linked list as an exercise. Um, and we could do similarly here. First, let's look at, just to make sure we understand the philosophy, let's look at an example with the colored boxes, much like we did in the previous example, so previous uh, data type, if you will. So if we add a 5 to the queue, uh, we enqueue it, if you will, then it becomes the beginning, and of course the head is pointing to it, and the rear is pointing to the one right after it. If we enqueue a 6, then the 5 is still at the front, followed by a 6, so the head is still pointing at 5, if you will. We enqueue a 7, in other words, they're just lining up, just like at the grocery store. So this guy is the guy that's currently standing in front of the checker, and then the next person, the next person with their baskets of food or whatever. Now, when I DQ now, I take one off the front, so the 5 comes off, checker servicing that person. 6 and 7 are still in line. If I DQ 6, now they're being serviced by the checker. 7 still in line, and again, if I DQ 7, then the queue is now empty, and so we're back to back to null, and everyone has been serviced that's in the, the grocery store line, if you will. So here we're going to use a linked list implementation, um, since we used an array implementation for the other, and then you could look at, at doing an array version of this one. So as a programming challenge, I challenge you to try and do the linked list implementation of a stack, and try to use the array implementation of a queue, just so you make sure not only do you understand the two concepts, but you have some practice programming as well. So in this example then, and this is starting with the NQ function, the NQ function uh, receives a pointer to a struct queue, and we'll define the structure elsewhere, and then again we're just going to queue up characters, so that's the actual data. Um, so I need a pointer, so I create a struct queue pointer called new pointer, I allocate space for one struct q node, we didn't use a type def here, so it's got the, the struct keyword in there, um, as long as new pointer is not equal to null. So I do this uh, if new pointer is not equal to null. Um, well, I'm sorry, I do this and if new pointer is not equal to null, I'm going to fill it up. So I'm going to put it in the data part of the structure, and you can tell kind of from here what's in the structure. There's a data part, which is going to be a character, and then there's a pointer part, which is going to start out as null, because there's nothing else in the queue except this first element. Um, if the queue is empty, then I'm going to set the front pointer to be new pointer, otherwise I'm going to set the rear pointer to be new pointer, um, and the, the one that's currently at the rear, it's next pointer to be new pointer. And uh, if you remind me in class, we can draw a picture of what this looks like on the board, and that may be helpful. So somebody can ask that question uh, when we have our next uh, class period about this, and I'll try to remember as well. Um, if for some reason I wasn't able to allocate space, then I'm going to print a message and say I couldn't insert into queue because I couldn't allocate space. Um, then here's the DQ function, not Dairy Queen, okay, but the removing something from the queue. It takes a, a pointer to a queue because it's going to return that, and then 
declares a couple of variables, and then it gets the value at the front, the data at the front and stores that in value, and the, whatever the front one points to makes that the temp pointer because now we've got to make it the front pointer, so we move that up to being the front pointer. And then um, if the front pointer is, means is null, that means there wasn't anything at the rear left, and so I can free up the space for the one that I just dequeued and I can return the value. And of course I can also check to see if it's empty as well. And we can go over this one some more in class if you want. We can actually create the structure definition and, and write a main to go with this one since it's not here. That'll probably be one of our exercises in, in class this week. Um, and we'll look at some different implementations of that as well. So this was a brief introduction to stacks and queues. Um, feel free to, to look at other resources on the internet and some of the links that I've put on Moodle and also to ask questions in class and to try some of this for yourself. Um, it's always a good idea to uh, uh, challenge yourself and to try to do some of these things on your own because it's only going to improve your understanding and only improve your skill as a programmer. The more skill you have, the more likely it is you're going to get a good job when this is all over, as well as internship opportunities and maybe even opportunities to work in a research lab while you're still here at UNT. So uh, we'll see you in class or in the next video lecture, whichever comes first. Have a good day.